Hello there. So let's see how we can get the number of isomers in C3H4. All right. So first things first, we are given the molecular formula C3H4. Now, generally, this is known as a propyne. All right. This is actually propyne generally, and it's propyne because what I have here is an alkyne, and it's having three carbon. All right. So an alkyne with three carbon three carbon atoms is called a propyne. Now, it's an alkyne because alkynes usually have the general formula CnH2n minus 2, such that if n is 3, would have C3H into 2n becomes 2 times 3, okay, then minus 2. So, I have minus 2, in which I will now have C3H into 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 is 4. So I have C3, H4. So that's how we have a propyne. Now, for this question, we are asked to find the number of possible isomers for C3, H4. Now, what this means is that we should get as many different structures for the molecular formula C3, H4. So our first task here would be note something that alkynes, right? Alkynes are isomers of dienes right it's an important concept you should note also they are also isomers with the cycloalkenes all right so this is an important um, fact you should note that alkynes are isomers of dienes and at the same time they are also isomers with cycloalkenes so what this means is that first of all if i'm given c3 h4 I'll get the alkyne structure. And for an alkyne, number one. Now, all right, so for number one, first things first, it's a C3. So three carbon atoms, one, two, and then three. To, to make this an alkyne, I will add a triple bond, one, two, and three. All right. So, of course, this becomes single. If I'm to complete the structure, for every carbon atom to be balanced, it must be bonded to four bonds. The carbon by the far left has one, two, and three bonds. It needs just one more to make it four. The carbon at the center has one, two, three, and four, so it's balanced. The carbon by the right has just one bond. It needs three more to make it four, two, three, four. So this carbon now has four bonds, one, two, three, four. So this, this structure is now complete. So if I look at this, how many carbon atoms do we have? One, two, three. How many hydrogen do we have? One, two, three. So it becomes C3H4. Now let's name this compound here. The compound we have here is propyne. All right, prop because I have three carbon at atoms, then an ion because it's an alkyne. So the first isomer we have here is propyne. So with this one here, we have now gotten the alkyne isomer. Let's look at the diene. Let's look at the score one here, diene. Now, still bearing in mind that I was given C3H4. So C3H4. Let's get the diene. Now, for the diene structure, our first task is to get the three carbon atoms. One, two, and three. For dienes, dienes mean two double bonds. So I'll have my first double bond and my second double bond. This makes it a diene because it has two double bonds. That's why it's called a diene. Now, I've done a full video about dienes on my website, all right? I'll tell you how to get my complete playlist on organic chemistry later. Now, let's proceed with this. So if I look at this, by the far left, the carbon here has two bonds, one and two. It needs two more to become stable, so three and four. The carbon at the center, this one here, has two bonds by the left, one, two, and two by the right, one, two, so it's stable. The carbon by the right hand side has two, that's one, two here, then three, four. So if I look at this compound here, this is a balanced compound. I have three carbon atoms, one, two, three, and four hydrogen, one, two, three, four. So it makes the same um, molecular formula isomer. Now, what's the name of this compound? To name this co compound here, right, this becomes um, 1 and 2. So it becomes a propa, 
So when it comes to naming the daint, she's usually a proper one, two, daint. So this compound is called a proper one, two, daint. That's how we name this, okay? So if you want to learn more about daint, you can check out my um, course on organic chemistry. I will tell you how to get it after this lecture. All right, let's look at the third one there. So we've looked at the um, the diene equivalent, which is this. Let's now see the cyclo see the cycloalkene equivalent. So number three. Let's look at the cycloalkene. So C C three H four. Now for a cyclo compound, we mean it means that the compound must be in a cyclic form, right? So this 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 is cyclo compound. Uh, let me give you a better diagram. So I have carbon, carbon, and carbon. For cyclo, it means it has to be in a ring format. That's this. That's number one. For an alkene, an alkene means there must be a double bond. Right. So I, this becomes a cycloalkene. Let's complete this structure. Now the carbon by the bottom left, this one here, has one, two, three bonds. It needs just one more to make it four. Okay, the carbon by the far bottom, right, uh, right hand, right, um, right bottom here has about one, two, three. It needs one more to make it four. The carbon upwards, that's this one here, has two bonds, one, two. It needs two more to make it four. That's three and then four. I have this. So each of the carbon atoms here are now balanced. If I look at this, I have 1, 2, 3, C3, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, H4. So with this, we have another compound here. This compound here, number 1, is in cyclic form. Cyclic means it's an enclosed form, like this. You can see it's enclosed. So since this is a, this is a cyclic form, it becomes a cyclo. So cyclo, it has 1, 2, 3. 3 carbon becomes a probe. All right? Also, the functional group here is a double bond. Double bond is for alkene. It becomes cyclopropene. Right. So, the isomers here are cyclopropene, propa-1-2-diene, and propine. So, hence, C3H4. So, therefore, C3H4 has three isomers. So three isomers. The isomers are the first one there is propine. The second isomer is propa one two diene, or you can just simply say propa diene. Think that that also works. Propa diene also works here because there can be no two four. So propa diene works in this case. And then the third one there is cyclopropene. All right, so these are like the three isomers of C3H4. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please. Sit. All right, so with that said, can you possibly get the number of isomers for C4? H6. So I'm giving you a tax. Find the number of isomers we have for C4H6. All right. Give the numbers in the comment section. And if possible, also give the names of the possible isomers of C4H6 in the comment section. All right. We'll treat this one here in our next class. Meanwhile, don't forget to like this video. All right. If you enjoyed the lesson, like this video. Don't forget to leave a comment. So comment the name of this compound. Or leave the name of this compound in the comment section if it's your first time on this channel or if you've not subscribed yet please do well to subscribe to this channel and of course share to your friends so that they can also learn also don't forget that I have done a complete playlist on organic chemistry where I discuss all the different homologous series they are on my website you can get it from there all right so I'll show you how to get it from my website just shortly thank you and see you in our next class.